Hello guys and welcome to my design pattern series. Today I'm gonna talk about the abstract factory design pattern. So let's start. Before explaining what abstract factory is, let me just give you some kind of motivation and explain you what problem it tries to solve uh, in order for you to understand it much clearly. Imagine you're developing a game and in this game you have many characters and all of the characters have uh, some kind of upgrades they can have uh, and all of them can have uh, body upgrades, arm, arms upgrades and uh, legs upgrades uh, which give them more abilities but each character uh, has to use some uh, different type of upgrade for each body part. So let's create some basic interfaces we, so we can work with. So we'll have an interface uh, upgrade and we'll have an interface interface character okay and it will have a type of a character now suppose we want to create some kind of a class that helps us to visualize the upgrades uh, we can have for the characters so we'll have some kind of class upgrades visualizer Visualizer, okay, and it will receive a character in the constructor. Save it, and it will have uh, a method for showing all the uh, all the upgrades it can uh, have for this character. So it will have show all method and what it will do, it will uh, show, well not show, let's, let's assume showing is actually setting the property and the properties will be shown in, with some different class. So we'll have some uh, body, public, okay, we'll have, uh, I don't know, body upgrades, it will be a list Grades. We'll have arms upgrades and legs upgrades. So uh, what we're gonna do? We're gonna set the body upgrades to be this. This create. Let's make it private. Create body upgrades. This legs equal to this create legs upgrades and this arms will be create arms upgrades so let's create those methods it will be a private create body upgrades will return upgrade array of upgrades and the same will be for the other two will be create legs upgrades and create arms upgrades okay so now we have our character and we want to create a body upgrade so the simplest code will be to check the type of the character if this character type is, I don't know, wizard, return, new clock, uh, I don't know, okay, let's create a cloak, and, okay, let's make it uh, simpler, so let's assume the upgrade has type as well, it will be a string, so we'll return here an array of upgrades, so the type is a clock, okay, and if it is character type is, a, I don't know, a knight, then I'm gonna return uh, what body armor? I don't know. Body armor. Okay. Body armor. 
and if it is otherwise okay we have two characters for example here but it can be many more and uh, I'm gonna throw a new error uh, unsupported character okay so uh, same thing gonna be for the legs and the arms just for the interest let's uh, use the legs uh, upgrades and it will be for the wizard for the wizard it will be boots and for the knight it will be uh, I don't know leg armor okay and for the arms uh, for the wizard it will be uh, I don't know some gloves magic gloves and for the uh, knight it will be a sword okay it will have a sword uh, he will have a sword to uh, to fight suppose we want to add another character and we need to support upgrades for that character as well what we'll need to do is actually going over the upgrades visualizer over all those methods the create body upgrades the create legs upgrades the create arms upgrades all of those methods and there could be many more and add another else statement for this method for this upgrade type uh, there are two problems with it one of the problems is simply forgetting to add the upgrade for uh, one body part uh, I don't know for legs or arms Another thing that it breaks is the open-close principle, which actually means uh, that in order to add some logic, some new logic to the code, you should be able to do it without changing any existing code. And this principle is good because uh, when you change existing code, you're uh, vulnerable to new bugs in, uh, in the existing code. And if the existing code is tested and you're not touching it and adding new code uh, in a new class, in a, a new function, which doesn't involve changing existing functions, it is much safer because you're not breaking uh, any uh, existing code. Another thing which is bad in this code is you cannot see simply uh, with one look all of the upgrades of one character. Suppose you want to see uh, all of the upgrades of the wizard, you need to go all uh, over the class uh, and look for the wizard word and look it's for its upgrades and they're all over the place uh, you need to scroll a lot and there are lots of uh, other parts in the way for you to see uh, the actual upgrades you want to see um, so it's much harder to see simple uh, compact object you're trying to look for one more thing which is bad in this code is uh, this class of grades visualizer is actually responsible for too many things uh, it is small but it still it does many things and you can see it by simply uh, thinking of the things that will make the class to change such as adding a new character adding a new upgrade to a character and adding a new type of upgrade i don't know some uh, uh, head head upgrades which we don't have here we have here only body legs and arms and if you're trying to add character new type of upgrade or a new uh, upgrade for a character those are all the reasons this class has to change and the final thing that I want to pinpoint here is this uh, these throw uh, functions cases uh, which means that if you have the if else if else if statements or switch statements you need to handle the default uh, scenario where your uh, character type is an unknown character and your here I'm throwing an error, but who knows, maybe I'm not supposed to throw an error, maybe I'm supposed to just return, simply return. So the problem with this is uh, if someone tries to use the upgrades visualizer, he needs to know what will happen if he'll use the show all method with a character which is not supported by it. He is actually not quite sure what will happen and the expected behavior is unclear. Here, here it's clear because I'm looking at the code, but if I'm just using this class and not looking inside of it, I'm not quite sure what will happen when, I'm, when I'll use the character that the class is not supporting. So let's look at a solution for this problem. And for this 
I'm gonna minimize the visualizer and I'm gonna call it the uh, naive upgrades visualizer and I'm gonna create a new upgrades visualizer okay and uh, what it will receive in a constructor will not be a character it will actually be an a factory okay let's create an interface for the factory interface and it will call and we'll call it upgrades factory and it will have three methods create body upgrades upgrade create arms upgrade and create legs upgrades and in the constructor of the visualizer I'm gonna receive the private factory the upgrades factory save it and now the show all method show all what it will do let's just copy those to make it quicker so what it will do it will use the factory to initialize this factory sorry yeah forgot those this factory dot create I'm using body so create body parts this body uh, these arms upgrades it will be factory create arms upgrades and these legs upgrades will be equal to this factory create legs upgrades okay so one thing uh, we can see here is the actual visualizer code got much simpler and shorter and more understandable but it's not the main uh, case here the main idea what I'm trying to show now after creating the visualizer what I'm gonna create is I'm gonna create a class for the wizard great factory factory and it will implement the upgrades factory and by implementing the upgrades factory I need to implement those so I'm gonna implement those and uh, let me just look so for the wizard, the body upgrades is a cloak, the legs upgrade is boots, and the arms upgrades are gloves. Okay, and the same thing I'm gonna do for the Knight. Okay, so for the knight, those are will be body armor, leg armor, and sword. So body armor, sword, and leg armor. So let's just look at what I created here and how it all works. Uh, in order to use this visualizer. All I need to do is create it with a new factory, for example, new with the new wizard upgrades factory. Okay, let's use it const visualizer and visualizer dot show all will actually uh, create. Let's just log it console log the uh, arms will be visualizer arms upgrades the legs will be legs upgrades and the uh, body will be body upgrades so let's build it Okay, and let's run it. Node source abstract factory JS. 
and for the arms I'm gonna I have gloves, for the legs I have boots, and for the body I have cloak, uh, which are all those upgrades uh, the wizard has. Now let's look at the code and see how it solves the issues I mentioned before. Now in order to create a new character, all we need to do is create a new factory for this character, for example, like wizard upgrade factory, and using that factory to supply uh, the upgrades it needed for this character and pass it to the upgrades visualizer. What it means is in order to create a new character you don't need to change any existing code, simply adding a new class. Now if we want to see a specification upgrades of a simple character, all we need to do is look at the factory of that character, the upgrades factor of that character, and for example here at the wizard's upgrade factor we can see clearly that the body upgrades of the wizard is cloak, the arms upgrades are gloves, and the legs upgrades are boots, and there is no other code cluttering uh, what we are trying to look for. We can just look at this class and within a few seconds see all the information we need about the upgrades of this specific character. Now we have a very clear and clean separation of concerns for our classes. The mapping between the character and the upgrades are done by simply creating classes. Each class is a new mapping between a character and a uh, upgrade. And uh, creating the upgrades is done by this simple factory. For example, the wizard's upgrade factory is responsible for creating upgrade upgrades only for the wizard character. And the knight's factory is responsible for creating upgrades only for knights. And the updates visualizer, it's not responsible for creating a simple upgrade, it's simply responsible for grouping them together and uh, showing them for the, I don't know, whoever uses this uh, upgrades visualizer. And the final thing which is solved here is the default case, which we ac actually don't have here. Uh, you can see that the visualizer doesn't really care which character it is, it doesn't check, so if the character is some unknown character, we won't have any factory for this character, so the code will not get into the visualizer. So the default, uh, there is no need for a default case, and uh, there are actually no if statements, and the code is very clean and very straightforward. We don't have any uh, splitting logic, so actually the testing here will be uh, very simple. Now let's just talk for a minute about the difference between the abstract factory and the factory method design patterns. Those of you who are not familiar with the factory method design pattern, you can click in the corner of the video, somewhere here, and watch my uh, factory method design pattern video. Now, the main difference uh, between those design patterns is actually uh, the, way, the reason why you need them and how they work. Uh, factory method is a method, it is one method, uh, which is responsible for creating uh, an object, some kind of object. And abstract factory actually uses factory methods, many factory methods, to group things together in a family. In this example of uh, this video, we had uh, families of characters. We had a family of a wizard character, and we have the family of a knight character. So the abstract factory for each character was responsible for creating objects, creating upgrades for those families. So for the family of the wizard, we had the cloak and the gloves upgrades, uh, which were upgrades of the family wizard. Uh, and they were created by a factory method for creating the body parts upgrades and the uh, arms parts upgrades. So by thinking about it, you can simply know which design pattern you can use. If you want to create a simple object, use a factory method design pattern. But if you want to create objects which are related together, like a family, uh, use the abstract factory design pattern. You have watched an episode about the abstract factory design pattern. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch other design pattern videos by clicking over here or you can trust YouTube to know what you really like by clicking here. If you want to watch other color related videos, 
Check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you next time on Polar Rocks.